श्री जी के सवाई सर जी सर टू काइंडली इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर ए के मित्रा सर टू द पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू इंट्रोड्यूस आर कलीग डॉक्टर ए के मित्रा डॉक्टर ए के मित्रा इज साइंटिस्ट ई एंड एसोसिएटेड प्रोजेक्ट डायरेक्टर ऑफ मल्टी मिशन डेटा प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम ऑफ इनसेट थ्री डी थ्री डी आर एट सेटेलाइट मेट डिविजन ऑफ आई एम डी न्यू दिल्ली He joined as IMD as meteorologist through UPSC in 2002 and obtained his PhD in quantitative application of remote sensing in weather forecasting uh, uh, remote sensing uh, in weather forecasting from Jadavpur University West Bengal in 2014 he has 19 years of experience in satellite meteorology he was instrumental in utilization of insight 3D 3DR satellite data in RGB preparation disseminations and nwp assimilation he was recipient of moes award 2015 of certificate of merit for his outstanding contribution in the field of atmospheric science and climate change he is also heading geospatial group of imd and has made available various products to forecasters and stakeholders he is also engaged in research work in operational meteorology atmospheric science uh, since last decade Uh, so i now uh, request uh, i now uh, uh, request uh, dr ak mitra to continue his lecture and uh, uh, to the participants for their uh, queries in chat box after the lecture okay thank you, <coughs> you savai sir ji ji for uh, for introduction and providing me the opportunity today so uh, good evening all of you Uh, today i'll give you a talk in the use of satellite technology in weather services so i think uh, my uh, slide is visible to everybody yes sir okay and my voice is also with, uh, audible to everybody so so let's let's start with um, uh, today's uh, lecture so first i'll i'll, I'll just uh, give you the brief which is uh, very common to everybody that where the natural hazards in india basically finds so if we go by the there are number of uh, Uh, areas like they, they need to cover like 68% uh, net shown area in the drought region forest fire there are 65% of similarly earthquakes flooding thunderstorm heavy rain flash flood landslide heat waves cold waves so we have all been gathered with the kind of a natural hazards in india since so long <clears throat> basically if we can see the data sparse region particularly due to the great himalayas to the north bay of bengal to the east and arabian sea to the west and indian ocean to the south so large area which we are finding out that there are there are site of kind of um, information is required and there um, we we feel that some observational point of view we need to gather those information because we have a number of uh, natural hazards in a different sort of weather related weather related um, events and they are seasonally dependent like if i can say the winter month mainly uh, cold wave fog heat and uh, western disturbance heavy rain and then if i go to the pre monsoon season particularly start from march to may cyclonic disturbances heat waves thunderstorms squalls hail storms and then monsoon that we are currently uh, facing that heavy rain fall floods and droughts sometime and then uh, more pre post monsoon that is october to december cyclonic disturbances northeast monsoon heavy rain fall so so basically how our weather if uh, these systems are affecting india because it is not homogeneous to everywhere sometime you can we will be finding out wd is mainly over the north northern side is at the same time mtc mid tropospheric cyclone or those those circulations are monsoon low or you can say mid tropospheric cyclone that you can see there uh, gujarat coast and that we have experienced recently and then thunderstorm entire india and then onset vortex that ov near uh, Uh, southern um, uh, you can say southern parts of country this is you can see and then uh, arabian sea and bay of bengal circulations that is cyclonic circulations or cyclonic agencies and then these are the kind of a weather system we are affecting uh, our country but meteorological observation the mainly enabling the um, the best part of it that we can able to get we can able to detect it because it enhances in the economy sector also so so our target will be like no weather should hazard should go undetected and unpredicted so the, the main aim of our organization is which has to be accurate warning that can hazards with reasonable lead time triggering response from disasters managers and public to the save life to the property and that is the most important point then if i can go with the uh, the past past decade we are to witness with a significant improvement in the field of uh, prediction and development sophisticated high resolution model nwp models 
as well as faster computers. But still, this has put an increased demand on high spatial temporal resolution surface atmospheric observation as input to the NWP models and coverage over land and virtually <coughs> non existent over the vast oceanic region. As I mentioned, over, over Arabian Sea, over Bay of Bengal, and Himalayas. So they required accurate forecasting of weather condition with all those information, particularly dealing with the kind of a extreme weather events. So the measurements of atmospheric component from space here plays a very important role. That is that is a remote sensing that I will say, particularly from the geostationary platform where repeated information, repeated observation with a regular measurement over a wide area as well as over the area that is not accessible accessible by conventional method, as I mentioned, that like Himalayas and the ocean. So, so here a reliable observation will be the from the component is called that the space based component. So, um, the space based component basically the number of parameters will come out from the space based that is from satellite or you can say the remote sensing. So, like temperature, incoming solar radiation, rain, humidity, winds, both at surface and in the various layer of the atmospheric column. So, as I mentioned that geostationary orbit, what basically it is, it is a basically enabled near simultaneous observations. So observation with the full earth disk with every um, every half an hour, every 15 minutes. So with the higher temporal resolution, uh, with the very, uh, we can say the capability of scanning the uh, as and when we require, that information comes from the geostationary orbit. And as there is a limitation of ground based observation, as I mentioned that those area where we cannot take observation because of the um, uh, data sparse region and then over the vast oceanic region and mountainous region and difficult terrain like Himalayas. So there is a lot of scope for improving the current earth observing system that is called remote sensing capability system with advanced satellites, particularly that what we are, we are, we are from almost like 50 years now from 1982 or whatever, 40 years, that is inside geostationary platform. So, so here comes that why do we need space technology? As you can see the graph, uh, if we go the domestic synoptic data, it is very small. And and but it is a bit the location specific, so you cannot uh, have a um, um, that is that is confidence is very low, but with small locations as your coverage areas are goes slowly, slowly our confidence limits are getting down. So as you go to the imagery visible IR, so now we need to bridge that gap with the number of observation from the space point of view. So so basically, what is the remote sensing? Now I'll come to the to the talk of how remote sensing plays and bridging the gap of. That the higher confidence of the forecasters, so that we can we can deal with the number of weather hazards. So remote sensing is a is a science acquiring information about the earth surface without actually being in contact with it. So we can take this observation from long, and then the method is basically restricted to employ electromagnetic energy such as light, heat, radio waves, and they because the means of detecting the measuring targets. So remote sensing is an advanced form surveying in which land surveying has been replaced by aerial photographic and satellite images. So we are not going by the place to place. It is taking from the high observation or you can say taking from the space and it is replaced by the satellite images. So so the what will be the application and that then application is geographical, geological, oceanographical, cartographic. So these are the kind of application that we need to, uh, to deal with. So remote sensing here essential tool for application areas like like as I mentioned again, geological, oceanographical, atmospheric, cartographic. So these all information come under the electromagnetic and electromagnetic spectrum. So as you can see that what whatever emissions are recorded in different wavelength and visible region, you can get it. Like you can see first you will see there is a radio frequency that we do not need for the atmospheric science and weather. Then it comes to the microwave. Microwave you can see 10 to the power to 10 to the power six. So here it is it is a long very longer wavelength and then comes with thermal IR like you can see 10 to the power minus 3 and then visible light you can see here in the visible light you can get the near infrared you can say blue green red so these are the micrometer that is the wavelength that basically sends the sends the emissions and basically they 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 govern or they are the medium where the where from the surface and they are reaching to the satellite sensors now when they are reaching to the satellite sensor how um, what could be the mechanism like then there will be two options like what could be the sensor, wavelength, sources, object, and what particularly electromagnetic spectrum where these observation matches like optical sensor system when we say so we will be having a two way visible reflectivity infrared and thermal IR. Thermal IR you can see here uh, first object where thermal radiation, temperature, emissivity they are 
coming out from the your your earth your skin of the earth whereas visible reflectivity basically whatever uh, source of energy comes from sun it is reflected back so this is reflection is basically taking care by the visible so that object this is the object and here it is a matter of so you can say the object will be from visible wavelength will be sun and the and the object will be reflectance so for ir it is a thermal radiation and then for visible it is a reflectance now uh, then electromagnetic spectrum what could be the better one than visible channel that is a 0.5 to 0.75 you can see here and then ir 3 millimeter to 10 meter 10 millimeter so these are the electromagnetic spectrum where you can you can see the observation of tir and visible so 0.4 and then it comes to the microwave now when we come to the microwave column you will be finding out radar system is there so microwave also it is going up and going down so it is a both the way so it is active sensor and passive both the way you can get the microwave observation because it is transmitted by remote sensing system one way of backscattering coefficients and that comes with the one millimeter so now you can see there there is an entire range of electromagnetic spectrum how you are uh, satellite sees the observation over the earth so if we can if we can go by the uh, the most important part is source of energy how this based on source of energy you can get it then that that instrument called the sensors what kind of sensors you are going to employ in your satellite so remote sensing sensors can be divided into two categories as i mentioned passive sensors and active sensors passive sensors you can find out detect naturally product um, produce radiation by sun earth or atmosphere so these are the radiometer basically mostly all the satellites are passive sensors where information coming out from the terrestrial radiation or you can say from the earth and the different layers of the atmosphere in the cloud or other constituent gases and the source will be either earth or sun but where the active sensor basically you know like radar sending the pulses beam and that is reflecting back that would be calculated means you are sending the beam to the particular object so they produces their own radiation and detect reflection or back scatters as you can see in the image so uh, some examples like uh, altimeter scatterometer sar so sar is, uh, aperture radar synthetic aperture radar this is sar is most important and they are basically meant for a kind of observation which is very high um, uh, spatial resolution and they are very very important for a particular kind of weather phenomena particularly if i can say like radar similarly uh, sar like uh, synthetic aperture radar basically the flood zone area or you can say the agriculture areas they are based, mainly used for the active sensor where the passive sensors are the basically based on the radiometers so these radiometers give you the all information what i just explained thermal visible and all kind of information now how this uh, <clears throat> information could be employed to the satellite then there will be a kind of a path where satellite moves on and that path is called orbit now here when we talk about geostationary orbit that means it will be kept almost altitude of 35000 km 35 to 36000 km and that satellite rotate once around in the earth in 24 hours so as the image you can see uh, it is rotating as according to the earth move its own axis the moment of the you know, the, the velocity of the satellite will be kept constant at, as compared to the earth rotating its own axis so that what happened continual coverage of the section of the globe will be received data acquisition straight forward uh, but there would be a very less likely of active system large antennas or microwave system could not be possible and over the polar region you can't get it so here 24 hour you can get it the information of your particular disk as you know that we have a inset 3d inset 3dr satellite these two satellites are basically of geostationary satellites and then second part comes the polar orbit so satellite altitude typically 850 kilometer and pass close to the pole as you can see the imagery it, it, it is ascending and descending it goes from north to south and south to north and the equatorial inclination will be almost around 100 in 98.7 degree so that what happened the mostly information you the, the best information over the over the poles can be obtained because it is a sun synchronous in the in the earlier one that is geo satellite that is a geosynchronous so the most important part is crossing time of equator is fixed good polar coverage you can get it good resolution active system are viable large payload with the more instrument you can get it from here but the only part is that you cannot get the continual coverage of the particular system so like you can see uh, uh, some of the, the events like a cyclone where you need to look at it every 15 minutes there your microwave could not play the uh, you can say the 
good uh, temporal resolution. But here again, the information both have difficult, uh, different sort of, and they have a both have their merits and demerits, but significance is more uh, better for the both the satellite you can get it. Now, what are the MET satellite basically? And where, what are the, uh, weather for, for use for the weather forecasting? You might be heard that inset 3D, 3DR we have, then uh, defense um, the MS, DMSP, that is a NOAA uh, US satellite. NOAA series of satellite, NOAA started from 7, 8, 9, and then it is 18, 19, now NOAA 20, it is come from JPSS 1, JPSS 2 will come. Meteosat, that is European, and Met, uh, <clears throat> then Metsat, Metops, that is European, uh, then MODIS, TRMM, visible and IR image from polar orbiting satellite that have been used in IMD since 1960 for topical analysis. So 1960, this, this uh, polar orbiting satellite have been used. Then Devorak techniques for intensity classification for North Indian Ocean since 1974. And then JPSS, that is a joint polar um, uh, system that is from the NOAA, NOAA 20 has been called JPSS 1. So basically, th these satellites have the MET sensor, basically mainly focus on the atmospheric observations. So current status, if we can go by monitoring of the observation, like what are the kind of observation? Monsoon, as you know that we are tracking the monsoon from the satellite also. Cyclones, thunderstorm, vegetation, soil moisture, cloud fog, ocean, land, atmospheric observations. And then MET data communication, it is also going to the assimilation cycle. And there is a conventional image that is um, uh, satellite information, the huge satellite data is going to the uh, model assimilation. So, if you can see, there is a 90% of data being assimilated to NWP model and, defi and defining the initial condition of earth, ocean and atmosphere. And thereafter, you can see there is a warning dissemination. So, these are the kind of a point where we are we are disseminating this information to, to the different sources like print media, user and stakeholders. Scatterometer here particularly, just I would like to mention that here it is also kind of a polar scanning. Uh, geometry where frequency is almost altitude is 720 kilometer and polarization is horizontal and vertical both and similarly wind speed we are getting these information are very very information um, informative particularly for the any weather hazard like oscat winds you can see here analysis winds and then uh, this cyclone falling you can see there is a, there is a there is a wind over the over the cyclone it is a superimposed or you can say it has been computed and and then we'll come to the, our own satellite inset 3d and inset 3dr satellite Basically, as it is launched in 2013 and in Z3DR launched in 2016. So there is a six channel imager. You can see that visible short wave IR, mid IR, water vapor, thermal IR. Resolution is also given. Resolution also, there is a paradigm shift in weather observation, particularly from in 3D, 3DR because of this multispectral nature of the imager. One kilometer from visible SWIR, four kilometer for MIR, TIR, and eight kilometer for water vapor. And and then the sounder is also it was one of the equipment um, which is uh, it it, uh, it works like a radio sonde. You can take the uh, you can say discrete layer of the atmosphere by spectrally um, uh, 19 channels of sounder where short wave, mid wave, and long wave IR uh, will be there. And the, there is almost 10 by 10 kilometer of resolutions. So um, this is the current and future satellite system that uh, satellite meteorology division. Uh, since early 70s, it has started. So 1972 to 1982, IMD uses to receive, as I mentioned, the NOAA data and NASA meteorological through SDUC. Images were printed at that time on photographic paper for using in weather forecasting. You can see here. And then 1982, we have started INSET 1A series, then 1B, 1D has come, and then INSET 2A, 10th July 1992, INSET 2E, then Ocean Set 1 has come, and then Kalpana satellite, you all know that the famous astronaut. That we named our MetSat satellite in the Kalpana's name. Then first Indian uh, your dedicated meteorological satellite where uh, resolution was two kilometer and IR resolution was eight kilometer. And then Inset 3A 2003 Ocean Set 2 Saral Inset 3D 3DR and now Inset 3DS and the upcoming satellites are also waiting for. So this is the current uh, full path of how satellite meteorology division has been evolved with a number of observations from different satellites since almost like 50 years. Uh, and then a uh, number of geophysical parameters, uh, products from inset 3 dr were developed. Uh, you can see that LST, that land surface temperature, sea surface temperature, OLR, AMV, cloud mass, smoke, CTT. CTT is the cloud top temperature, AOD. <coughs> so number of observation has been has been received from this imager and then geophysical parameter of inset from sounder, like temperature profile, vertical profile, you can get it from almost 100 HPA, 50 HPA and total ozone, Lifted index, humidity profile, geopotential height, and this is a T5 gram, which is most useful for sounder data. You can you can receive it 
and then you will get it all the, your convect, uh, convective temperature charge couple you can say ccl lcl lfc low condensation level that that kind of information which is most crucial for the weather forecaster to see the convective weather that information also been derived in terms of t5 ground and these are the images generated from inset 3d 3dr uh, stakeholders like you might have heard that my, my uh, mata vaishnav devi amarnath yatra chardham yatra aviation sector and then bdnsc curve <coughs> so number of observations also taking and we are providing to the different stakeholders now uh, the importance of satellite meteorology or you can say satellite remote sensing or you can say how it could be used the most important uh, thing is that weather enemy weather forecast now in weather forecast it comes that that immediate now cause the most important part is how a operational nwp you know that if there is a there is a uh, kind of difficulties in timing and location because of the model run but here uh, and then model will give you the what could happen but here satellite will give you what is happening the so current status and with the play of animation you can able to see what is happening so that now casting is most important part of remote sensing from weather forecasting and uh, smaller scale of convection has resolved in radar as we can see the motion you can see in the satellite or animation is more stable and orderly finds out to de detect the weather phenomena now now it comes to the kind of a how satellite imagery could be interpreted so there are six basic characteristics to identify cloud in satellite images like brightness texture shape of form elements so brightness is the cloud in imagery is one of the best indicator to determine the thickness composition and height of the cloud in visible imagery brightness are associated with the thick cloud due to the high reflectivity in ir imagery brightness represent the cold that is a warm cloud top temperature so these are the kind of information that you need to look at then second part is the texture shape of the uh, uh, elements what kind of shape uh, the, uh, this particular cloud is having i'll show you the example and then pattern how cloud system on satellite imagery can be recognizable like whether it is a cellular or circular banded comma how it is then size what could be the cloud pattern size and where 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 the element are useful indicator of scale of weather system say monsoon it is a huge extent so that is the size plays a very important matter here but even the thunderstorm it will be very very small scale of cumulus cloud similarly vertical structure the information regarding the vertical structure of the cloud can be obtained through satellite imagery and then ctt that what, what i wanted to say the cloud top temperature this obtained from ir imagery is valuable parameter to assess the height of the cloud now uh, some of the point that we need to be remember and that is the most important is while seeing from the geostationary satellite that is a continuity in time has to be maintained and then the picture should not be viewed in isolation but must be interpreted with the reference to past weather and earlier imagery and it is also necessary to keep in mind that time of day season local peculiarities topography while interpreting satellite imageries so <clears throat> like if you are seeing the summer or winter and now what kind of northern and southern hemisphere will look like that brightness will be changes so this also also keep in your mind and then local features like mountains valleys they introduce their own effects like you can see the imagery cb cloud is like if you see you will find out the lower level middle level and higher level at the same time cumulus status strato cumulus the lower level middle level alto cumulus and zero cumulus zero status zero is the high cloud so basically we need to detect this information from the satellite now i'll show you the how cumulus cloud like if we see visible imagery in the visible in the above one cumulus will be look like a large individual elements and group of broken scattered whereas the ir imagery cumulus will be look like a large area that can be seen in a dark gray shades at the same time cumulus cb cloud that is a cumulonimbus cloud in a visible imagery it is appear as a white cloud you can see here this white image this, this patches this is a cb cloud whereas the ir imagery it appear as a very bright white tones with a well defined boundaries that you can see in the ir imagery so in that way ir and visible both can be able to detectable cb cloud and let me tell you this is a very important for the pre monsoon season <coughs> then status cloud in a visible imagery you will find out the thick status or dense fog appears to a uniform bright tones they have uniform bright tones but where the ir imagery because of the lower temperature um, the cloud fog surrounding surface however during day time contrast may be sufficient large especially especially over the land so here status will be look like ir like this and status like this and then stratocumulus that we have seen uh, stratocumulus visible imagery appear as a cloud sheet you can see these are the sheets complete um, uh, uh, low bt of sheets and parallel bands and sheds where the ir medium to dark gray shade that you can see medium to dark gray shade and alto cumulus similarly the size of the cloud if you can see uh, individual element alto cumulus is smaller than the pixel resolution very small cloud 
Similarly, for IR imagery, it appears as a look like a gray shades, like you can see here. <coughs> Similarly, the cirrus cloud, cirrus, they have a different structures. You can see in the cirrus, thin cirrus is difficult to detect because the, your resolution is here 8 kilometer. It is very difficult sometimes. But dense cirrus shows the patches that you can see here. Whereas in the brightness, uh, you can go by IR. But the dense patches are very bright, but thin cirrus subject to considerable contamination of much warmer. This is the darker gray that you can see here. So, so this is the one table that uh, what I have explained that how fog could be look like in IR and visible light, very light, very gray shade. Similarly, status cloud, very light gray, thick, medium, high cloud, bright gray shades, very light gray shade, low, medium cloud, very bright gray shade. So these are the most important parameters that you need to, your most important features that you need to look at. And then some of the products like uh, hydro estimator, this is a rainfall products, uh, multi, um, um, you can say the multi spectral rainfall, so some threshold, like if it is goes more than 15 millimeter, you can around, you can say that it is a more going for heavy rain. CTD, if it is goes more than 220 to 255, that means there is a convection. OLR values, if it is less than 150, then there is a convection. Then RGB, that I will come to the, uh, I'll show you the imagery, then you will be able to understand. And then finally, the animation. So these are the four or five in the broad window, you can see if you can go with the satellite imagery and by this concept, you will be able to better way to see the natural weather hazard like you can see the deep convective cloud if you can see if it is less than 150 to 160 this emits low value of outgoing radiation like you can see here this this part they are the very 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 low uh, you can say olr value deep convective clouds are can be seen from this olr that is less than 150 to 160 now you can see here like this so these are the and then similarly ctt that is the cloud top temperature you can see here Cloud top temperature will be look like this. So, uh, so like Andaman to your almost Lakshadweep area, the huge uh, cloud top contour you can see and you can you can analyze it. So, like a very deep convective cloud less than 220. Most important here that how you'll be identifying the deep convective cloud 220 to 235, background convective cloud 235 to 255. And then the new thing that's come that is a RGB and the most important and most successful uh, worldwide that detecting the weather hazards from geostationary platform using the red green blue composite basically it is nothing but it is a multispectral composite qualitatively false color image they designed to enhance the specific features of low cloud fog cloud phase volcanic ash dust convection air mass characteristics so the advantage of these imageries are because all these are visible mir ir all packed into the one rgb image like you can see here it has all started from in uh, year 2000 by umet set they developed this rgb and we brought it in this inset and we Put on inset 3D and inset 3DR, and because it has a multiple features, like you can see the the top um, column here, CB clouds look like it is a color code that you need to understand. Like CB cloud will be like brick color, CB cloud small droplets, and then water clouds, maritime stratocumulus, cumulus, snow, cirro cumulus, mid orographic clouds. So they have a nature of like how they will see. Like visible will see the reflectance in cloud optical depth. And then SWIL will see the cloud particle size. This is the two important when they merge and then IR modulate the temperature color that is the blue. So then when they color like put, put into the one, one image, you can see the multiple observation you can give multiple events that can be seen by the only one image like mid orographic cloud over, over, over this area, then western disturbance, snow, low cloud, flow of dust, cirrus, sun glint, many features you can see by only one imagery. Now, like you can see the inset 3DR imagery like snow, high clouds, low clouds. By seeing only by the color code only, you can able to understand how the snow is being forming and where the snow is being there. High cloud is there and low cloud is there. And then inset 3D RGB are also covering the large extent of fog that you can see from our rapid that right from here you can see here from Punjab to almost like Sikkim around West Bengal and near to the Bangladesh and then this. But whereas if you can see the lower pattern, lower bound, you will be finding out low medium cloud. Upper part is the fog. So this extending or, or uh, delineation of fog and low medium cloud is very much important. And this RGB <coughs> help us to do so. Like the, this, uh, the stunning colorful is this imagery, what you are looking at, this information very important for the forecaster, for situational awareness and for the now casting because this spectral signature can be well analyzed. Like where is the cloud? Now cloud, if you can see like here, Temperature is very less. Where the snow, you'll be finding out there is absorption is very much. And where the fog, <coughs> where the reflection is the most place, the important note. So three phenomena can be seen from 
from this 3D, 3D, R, RGB. That is a very spectacular image, or you can say the imagery depicting all kind of cloud, snow, and fog. And then signature of cloud and snow that can be seen over the JNK. From JNK to you can come to the Nepal and all that area. Where is the snow? Where is the mid cloud? Where is the surface? So these these values could give you these RGB values could give you to help you to delineate this weather. And then thunderstorm, thunderstorm or thunder cloud, cumulus cloud. This is March, April, May. You can find out small, small that small pixel that is the cumulus that you can see that. And then whatever this the brick color what you are finding, this is the mature. That is a thunderstorm had happened. Thunder thunder cloud, water liquid, liquid water content. All these things are available. So so similarly night time also. Uh, RGB because we do not have a same uh, channel what Severi is having, so we fix it to the different color shape. So in the night time, these RGB will look like this. Flow of dust will be looking like this. Western disturbance, low cloud, and this feature. So daytime and night time both play the very important role. Like you can see, TIR2 and SWIR fog can be seen very well. Where the TIR1, TIR2, mid IR, whatever, you can't find this fog in it. Uh, one more example I'll give you, like, uh, like you can see over the JNK. And um, you will be finding out there is there is a SWIR visible and IR channel. You will be finding out there in the Srinagar, there is a kind of um, uh, fog and which can be helped to detect it. Like you can see here, uh, this is the fog that can over the Srinagar, the valley. Entire it has been covered. Uh, whereas then the RGB it is clearly look like there. Where is the oh, snow and this is the your fog. And then this is like this one. So so this this RGB has helped us a lot, like you could daytime fog, how you can detect it. This is the one parameter that is a product that's fog low cloud, and this is the RGB. Exactly that shape has been captured from this. So daytime, nighttime, this fog area can be seen. And then rapid, as I mentioned, that the tool, I think everybody should go to the this rapid tool where they can analyze by own. Um, you can see that features that can be analyzed: color, opacity, thickness, time series you can plot, transit, area measurement, distance measurement that you can be seen, and then open street map, all the maps are there. It is a well. Uh, Self-explanatory. You can click on this, and otherwise you can go to the website. Our document is report is also there. And then finally, we are also putting the satellite bulletins every 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 three hour three hourly, and sometimes it is the hourly. And with the, with the with the help of satellite data, where the vertex is, where is the WD, where is the your your um, observations are. So this developed um, and developing and weak. These three conditions are also putting into the our everyday satellite bulletin. Some rapid cases, like if I can give you, you can see here. Dust. This dust is flowing from the Arabia to the northwest India. They are mainly affecting it, like you can see, or this very very finer way um, detection of the dust by the point also by the values also you can able to delineate where the signature of dust can be found. Now you can see here the dust storm can be seen over the sentinel imagery. Uh, very sharply you can see when you insect 3D R satellite imagery also you can get it. The most important part is here that sentinel imagery you will be getting every two days. Whereas in set 3D R RGB, you will be getting every 15 minutes. So that that's the most important. Um, uh, uh, you can say the tool which a forecaster can utilize because two days waiting for two days rather we can go for every 15 minutes, and that uh, could help us to uh, help us our forecast um, uh, distribution. And now this is a thunderstorm. You can see here over the Delhi. This reason uh, you can see the high CTT values. You can see by CTT values you can you can detect it, and then Chhattisgarh and Delhi reason. And if you can see here, if I click on, then you will finding out the uh, well um, uh, denoted uh, the values. You can see TT values can be seen. Like you can see Delhi and Chhattisgarh, small parameter of OLR. As I mentioned, the deep convective cloud of the 150 to 160 can be very well delineating this kind of a you can say thunderstorm <coughs> activities. And then RGB. So there are many parameters are there. You can choose any one of them for you, if you would like to go for the research, like daytime. Um, um, uh, microphysics that is RGB you can keep wind wind parameter can also be seen uh, and then you can calculate and you will finding out you see these are the daily reason and Chhattisgarh brick color that means the mature CB cloud has already formed and the storm has been reported so so these these are the these are the area Chhattisgarh and uh, north with the Haryana and Delhi subject and the night time also you can see here night time um, the wind parameter and then you can see here this is uh, the Calcutta reason so, so the, the and then radar also you can match up, match it up. Like you can exactly from the radar echoes also it will be from satellite imagery. You can find out. You can see the circle which I am drawing up. Exactly the same phase of OLR and CTT. You may get it. And then uh, and then you will finding out the advantage is that combining this spatial, temporal, and multispectral satellite imaging capabilities that is the most useful for development of convection now casting products. 
So that here where the space tool or satellite plays a very important role. Now some of the tool like thunderstorm, if you can click on like brick color or the eastern eastern Uttar Pradesh, you'll be finding out there is a sharp grid, uh, sharp uh, declination of your temperature. There you can be advisory can be issued that there is supposed to be from the thunderstorm, and then some of the um, uh, some of the weather information that is from the weather uh, space you can find out intratropical convergence zone. That is the belt of low pressure which circle the earth generally near the equator where the trade winds of the northern and southern hemisphere comes together. That's the most important part because this, this entire circulation, this ITC jet plays a very important role because it characterized by the convective activity which generates often thunderstorm over the larger area. For India, mainly this ITC jet plays a crucial role for the monsoon and thunderstorm region. And then this is the ITC jet from the IR. And then western disturbance, particularly during the, during the winter, North India, Western disturbance originating in the Mediterranean is the area of low pressure that brings sudden shower, snow and fog for Northwest India. So shape will be like this. You might have been that is the Western disturbance. And then if you can see the thunderstorm, here, you can see here, this small, small thunderstorm cloud. This is the, this is the higher reflectivity values where thunderstorm can be seen, this one. And then it comes to the monsoon depression during the, during the uh, monsoon originally refers to the low pressure system affecting the uh, North Indian Ocean and the Bay of Bengal in summer. It is an important rain producing system monsoon period. As you know, that low pressure area performed in the Arabian Sea or Bay of Bengal, we assume that it could be a, it could be give you a very lots of rain because it is a low pressure system. And, and this depression is basically isobar drawn in the surface synoptic weather chart. And uh, the cyclonic circulation, this will be wind will be around 17 to 33 knots. So this is the monsoon depression. Uh, and then this is a westerly trough that is also from satellite you can get it because stuff is nothing but elongated area of the air pressure lower air pressure so they bring amount of vertical wind shear and tropical disturbance in deep tropics and basically they induce the thunderstorm activities and then this is the jet stream jet stream is the fast moving you can say the west to east and north i mean northern hemisphere between 25 to 35 degree north and height of about 12 to 14 kilometer and these wind speed is westerly jet stream are commonly 150 to 300 kilometer. So northward movement of the subtropical jet is the first indication of onset of monsoon over India. So the northward, so during the during the uh, monsoon period, it moving to the northward, and during winter period, it will be jet stream will be lower the southern phase, southern southern uh, southernward movement will be there. And then this is the advantage of microwave. See the right side, you are seeing the um, one expert. I am just would like to again here. Now whatever thing that is the imagery part that is from geostationary. But sometimes, as I mentioned, that from microwave, what role they can play. Now you can see there is a one satellite of Giri, where IR imagery you can't find anything from this right side. Only only the uh, the texture pattern. But here you can get the entire initial in internal structure of the cloud can be seen from the polar orbiting satellite. Even if you can get a one or two passes, it will help you. And then instead 3D 3D R rapid scan. Basically, as I mentioned, that every scanning is the most important because it gives you the temporal resolution. To improve the forecasting accuracy, detection of severe weather is most important. Deep convectivity is more important. And powerful observing tool is scanning the earth at very higher interval. IMD has started from satellite division four and a half minutes rapid scan. <clears throat> that is roughly around five minutes for Indian region. And you can see here, this is a contemporary SOP we have made. From the forecaster, as we got to know the area, we try to build up this in, and then it will go to the MCF Hassan. And then we disseminating this particular portion of the Observation to the forecaster, NWP modelers, decision makers, government agencies. And then you can see here, this is animation of this rapid scan. You can find out here that how rapid scan plays. Now two cyclones were there at the time, that year 2018. You can find out every four and a half minutes. You can see the, both the satellite at every four and a half minutes. Very high temporal resolution. We have a dedicated web page for this rapid scan. You can get into, uh, you will get it all visible image, short wave image, thermal infrared, water vapor color composite, OLR, all the information of the rapid scan, you can get it. Let me tell you, this is the most important, very high temporal resolution rapid scan strategy. And then like you can see the VSCL, Luban and Titli, as I was showing you the animation. So we are getting it. And then regional uh, specialized meteorological center, uh, as Madam as a previous speaker has already mentioned that. This is, uh, there we are, we are, uh, we are getting this information, designated to them. And these are the tropical cyclone modules, like number of microwave, inset, so all our satellite uh, derived product where the decision making uh, is the most important crucial role from space is, is one of the inputs. Like you can see here, uh, insert 3 d rapid scan. Um, I can also be seen in the green color, you can see the animation. Like you can see, this is one. 
So this is this is the kind of a tool which has really helped us a lot. And then this mechano, you can see uh, as I am one cyclone, and then this one. So left hand side you can see the imagery where uh, IR imagery during night time. But either right hand side you can see the microwave imagery will give you the internal structure. Now what basically internal structure means? Internal structure will give you the the information about whether the cloud liquid water contained is available near the uh, wall cloud or not because intensity will be defined by the wall cloud also here so there you can see here but where is in the geostationary you can't make out this thing because in ir there is a there is a there is a shortcoming that you cannot get you are getting only the cloud top temperature but in a microwave it can penetrate through the clouds and that can give you the information and then uh, now this is a similarly ashoba cyclone you will be seeing that left hand side there is a complete dense uh, uh, cloud patch whereas in the microwave we can see the internal structure of heavy rain band or you can say the kind of water liquid contained of cyclone asoba scattermetric wind you can see the the higher than signature of the black one that you can see intensity is very higher the scattermetric wind is also very important from the ascap and this is the animation of dust storm you can see here the dust storm you can see here here now you can see the cloud this dust is moving from Jodhpur. You can see from Jaisalmer, Jodhpur, it has all started. So here the RGB is the really greatest tool. We can say in the last five, six years, we have been get benefited. Our observation as there is a there is a real improvement from the RGBs. And then fog and Varda cyclone, you can see here. Uh, same time, this is the fog over the northern, I mean, northern India. Southern India, Varda cyclone was also seen. And then it is a, this is a kind of night time. Night time, how cyclone will be look like and the fog will be of light color. This is the Tibetan high. Tibetan high, you can see over the Tibetan plateau, where anti-cyclonic circulation can be seen from the water vapor channel and with the animation. So that anyway, this is this is the kind of information which is most important for the forecaster. WD that you can see approaching WD with the help of approaching WD five six days ahead, it can be given northern India kind of advisory that parts of area would be get affected by rainfall, thunderstorm, and lightning. And this is the one, one example of how lightning has been merged. From MD website, you can see the lightning data has been updated with the satellite imagery, uh, or you can say merge with. And it is the most important for Indian Air Force, IATM, and all these things we gather together from ISR and IMD. We made it here in Satmet Division. We formulated in almost three, four, four, three, four years. And it is a very good, uh, crucial knowledge about the 10, 20, 30 minutes of the different lightning occurrence from inset 3D. And this is the proposed fourth generation satellite is 2025. Where advanced imager, as I am mentioning that for humid satellite, we can get it. And the hyperspectral infrared sounder is also will be useful. Now we have a broadband sounder, but there we, uh, we need uh, our requirement is hyperspectral sounder. Then lightning imager over the satellite, like what GOES is having, radiation budget monitoring, space weather monitoring instrument, and microwave radiometer for all weather capabilities. So these are the proposed uh, features for generation series of satellite uh, with the multiple platform we are approaching from ISRO. Let's hope, and this is I'm um, thankful to all, uh, Dr. Mahapadra Sahib, our TGM sir, for giving me the, the opportunity to present this talk. Thankful from ISRO and all other my colleague and and other sources where I can I presented this one. So thank you. Uh, I thank Dr. Mitra for his very informative and excellent lecture. Uh, to the audience, if they have any queries, they may please ask. They may also write in the chat box. Still, we have five minutes. So I request all the audience to freely ask questions to Dr. Mitra. Okay. So most of participants like Akansha, Chetan Kumar, Atin Kumar, Mitra. Ah, yes. Ah, one question from the chat box to Dr. A.K. Mitra. How is wind data obtained from remote sensing? So there is a question. Yes, I think this is a very good question because uh, there are uh, different way of uh, getting this wind data from satellite. 
First is the from geostationary satellite wind data has been derived from geostationary consecutively three images. So in the three images, like uh, if I want to derive from eight UTC data, then seven thirty eight UTC and eight thirty UTC. These three imagery has been as, uh, aligned. After aligning it, we are getting the um, the pixel which is being uh, which is being moved out moved out. You can say the cross correlation method has been employed. So there is a there is a huge system, but I would say. The cross correlation method of movement of the cloud can be can be calculated with the velocity of the velocity of the movement of the cloud, like a 20 meter per second or 20 kilometer per per hour. The way we are calculating, and then algorithm assigned which height will be assigned to that cloud. From that, NWP model first case was taken and then derived from the geostationary satellite. Whereas in polar orbiting satellite, we, it, it has been captured from different way. It is a, there is a direct method of beam where the microwave. Um, you can say horizontal and vertical. Um, uh, you can say <coughs> the movement capture from the microwave satellite. So geostationary satellite consecutive images are required. Of the polar satellite, there is a single um, calculation of the computation of the wind. Okay, there is another question from Tushar Pawar. Why don't we have ozone column measurements over India with the help of remote sensing? No, ozone, ozone column measurement we have uh, basically from inset 3D 9.7 mic, uh, micrometer is basically detect the your ozone channel. Yes, we are getting it. Ozone column we are getting it here. Uh, the important part is that from geostationary uh, perspective, the accuracy is not as that may rely on the uh, compared to the microwave. So in the microwave, yes, microwave ozone uh, column is the much better than the geostationary because a lot of your uh, you can say the mid level of uh, corrections of your uh, different constituents of gases uh, and then the, the transmittance. So these are the things that are lacuna, but, but uh, from geostationary also you can calculate it, but microwave it has the most accurate you can get. Okay, any questions, still questions from audience? They may please ask. Okay, I, I think uh, there is no more questions. Okay. I thank Dr. Mitra thank for you. his excellent informative lecture. Thank and you. And uh, audience may feel anytime they may contact uh, Dr. A.K. Mitra. He is in SACMAT division at our headquarters, Delhi. So for uh, any queries, you may please refer him. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, for the audience, uh, next. Uh, lecture will be in on next friday coming friday so thank you for your uh, presence for the two lecture series okay today's lecture series okay thank you